Hi everyone. Welcome to the first ever Minutia Minute. I'm your host, Minutia Man. So, I've been wanting to do a comic book kind of YouTube thing for a long time. I haven't known what to do. Uh, I wanted to do sort of like a review all the new stuff coming out. The problem is all my comics come in monthly by mail because um, I have like an online you know pull list basically and so I always get my books really really late after everyone else has already read them the other problem is I collect DC and DC only um, not knocking Marvel I just can't afford to actually collect two so if I read Marvel it's usually in the trades so I just wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do um, because obviously DC has this going on right now and everybody's reviewing this. I don't want to review it because everybody's already doing it. And there are a lot of great people reviewing it. I'm, I've been really enjoying watching what people have to say about it online. Because my books are literally sitting over in the post office right now. I can't get them until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. So I've been just like oogling, you know, every spoiler I can get uh, because I'm just so excited to read these. So anyway, so then I was left with, you know, what am I... What am I going to do? Um, so I decided for the first one, um, I'm going to review something that is very near and dear to my heart, that's kind of been on everybody's back burner for a lot of years and shouldn't be. Um, those of you who are first, the first people here that are probably going to watch this video probably are already well aware of it. So direct this video to the friends of yours that are not already aware of this. Um, I first became familiar with this particular character uh, based on the film that came out in the early 90s about him. Uh, it got me both into movies and into comics at the same time. It was a long time before I actually read this particular character. Um, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> without having read a single page of the comics, I was, I just have, I'm such a fan of this character just from the movie alone that I spent 75 bucks and got myself the oversized slipcase edition of the character and as you have now definitely guessed I am of course talking about the Rocketeer. Um, most people are familiar I think with the Disney movie um, of the same name the Rocketeer. Um, I have a DVD copy of it. It's actually coming out on Blu-ray and I'm really excited to get it. If you don't have it already, wait and get the Blu-ray version. It's going to have a little bit of extras, I think, and whatever. Um, this is just a great movie. It's a lot of fun. It's not a you know high art sort of gun with the wind type, but it's a really, really great 30s uh, style superhero um, pulp story. Uh, and it's directed by Joe Johnston, who was the director of the new Captain America movie, which is sort of the same thing, sort of a 30s and 40s pulp action hero. So um, if you have friends who went to see Captain America and liked it, have them watch The Rocketeer. It's required, because this is so much better than the Captain America movie. And I, I mean, I kind of enjoyed the Captain America movie somewhat, but it just it doesn't come close to this, okay? Um, so for those of you who are familiar with the Rocketeer, you know it's great. For those of you who are unfamiliar, why should you read this book? Well, the truth is, um, this is one of the greatest comic book characters ever created. Um, Dave Stevens is the creator. He wrote, he's wrote every story, and he drew every story. Um, he was a storyboard artist on Raiders of the Lost Ark, so if you like Indiana Jones, you're going to like this. Uh, he was also a storyboard artist on Thriller, so if you like Michael Jackson's Thriller video, you're gonna like this, at least the art, uh, and the, the style, or whatever. Um, he has really, he just has the most fantastic art, it's really pulpy, but at the same time, it's incredibly detailed. Um, just kind of show you a few random pages here, I guess, I mean, I'm not really, I'm not really picking anything specific. Um, but if you, if you appreciate good art, uh, he always kind of reminded me of John Cassidy. If you like him, you'll probably like Dave Stevens. Honestly, I mean, there's... I don't know who wouldn't like Dave Stevens. And uh, 
Daisy's really great at drawing naked women. So guys, if you need that to, to enjoy your comics, <laughs> the main character is naked a lot in these. I'm <laughs> sorry, ladies, but uh, she's pretty attractive. Anyway, um, so these... These comics were published over a lot of years. It had a really messed up sort of publication history. There's only two stories. And the first story um, was published more or less in a normal set, you know, set time period. Um, but it went through several different publishers. The second story started before the movie came out. The movie came out in like 1991 or something like that. And then didn't finish until 1995 or 96. So it has a really just rocky publishing history. So I don't recommend necessarily getting the individual issues. Just get the, the hardback uh, collection that IDW recently put out or the deluxe edition if you really have you know, that much faith on my advice. Um, but go out and check it out because it's really good. Not only does it have great art, um, but it also has really great characters. The main character, Cliff Secord, uh, sort of a bumbling um, Joe Lunchpail type that is dating the supermodel who you see naked, <laughs> you already saw naked. Um, and so he's sort of dealing with that and he always wants to get in fights with her photographers and all this stuff. And It's very entertaining. It's a very, very well-developed character. Um, Betty is his girlfriend. She's based on Betty Page. And Dave Stevens is actually, or when he was still alive, he passed away, uh, became good friends with Betty Page. So there you go. If you want to get to know a supermodel, type, draw them in your comic books, and then you can get to know each other, I guess. Um, so, since I want to cover some more recent material, I figured I'd bring up uh, the more recent series. There has been a little bit of a resurgence in the Rocketeer. IDW has been pushing it. They put out the, the books, uh, the original books, and then they have recently published Rocketeer Adventures. Um, this is a lot of fun. If you haven't picked this up and you're already a Rocketeer fan, go pick it up. If you haven't read Rocketeer before, read the originals first. Um, but this is just a real treat. It's basically a whole bunch of vignettes. It's a four-issue series um, with a, all kinds of different uh, writers and artists. It's got uh, Alex Ross does the covers, uh, Mike Mignola, Bruce Tim, Darwin Cook, Jeff Darrow, um, Ryan Sook, Dave Gibbons, all have art in here. So this is a comic book worth reading if not for no other reason than for the great artists that are in it. Um, it's really great because it really parallels sort of the sorted comic book history of the character in and of itself because you just get these little snippets of action or character and that's never a complete story. It's always just a little segment of something. There's one in particular in issue two by Darwin Cook that starts off like a movie serial and it opens with storyboards of what happened last time and then ends on another cliffhanger so I mean and that's how all the books are all these Rocketeer adventures have been all the vignettes um, which is kinda like the comic because the comic was so staggered over so many years and it had such a short run we only got just a tiny little taste of how awesome it could have been and so um, this both is a send a uh, both is sort of a love letter to the character, but at the same time sort of embraces its sort of sordid history. So I really recommend it. I've got the first three issues. Issue four is at the post office right now with all my DC New 52 books. Um, but at the very least, pick up issues one and two. They were amazing. Uh, issue three was also good. It wasn't quite as good as the first two. I just like some of the vignettes in it. Um, in the first two, better. Um, so there you go, that's the Rocketeer, and if you aren't already into him, get into him, because we need to bring him back. It's, especially the movie, it's like, I remember reading Wizard, I think it was issue 150, they had the 50 best comic book movies. The Rocketeer, this little movie right here, by Disney, sort of a throwaway 1991 movie that was a complete flop, was number 5 on the list. And this was after like X-Men 2 and Spider-Man 2 you know, a lot of, the, sort of the best superhero movies that came out uh, in the 2000s were on that list. This was still number five after that. It was beat by, like, Spider-Man 2, X-Men 2, and Superman 2. Or, you know, I mean, it wasn't beat... It was beat by some great comic book movies, but it wasn't beat by very many. So, go check it out. 
Um, because this has never gotten this big following. Oh, I always expected it to sort of get this cult group. And it, I mean, I guess there is a small group somewhere out there. I've never met anyone of, the, of that group, and I want to, which is part of the reason why I guess why I'm making this video. So, anyway, um, let's make this a cult movement and get him back on track and make this series of vignettes into an all new comic book series starring the Rocketeer. It won't be as good because unfortunately Dave Stevens isn't with us anymore to do it himself, but it could be, there could be so much fun. There's so much to do with this character still. So that's uh, the main topic we're dealing with today in the Minutia Minute. Um, there is going to be a little mini segment which we're going to have at the end of every video. It is called the minutia mor morsel, and it, it can come from any moment in comic book history, it can come from a specific issue of a comic book I want to talk about, it can come from an ad in a comic book that I want to talk about, it can come from um, like the comments at the end of a comic book, I mean it can come from anything, it can be a cover, it can be whatever. Um, today is going to be kind of a broad one, um, but since everyone's talking about the new 52, I want to talk about it a little bit, but not um, say what everybody else is already saying because I, there's nothing I can say that's going to be news to you. Um, so let's just talk a moment for about, uh, or about the New 52 and the fact that now that, as everyone knows, now that DC is rebooted, Dick Grayson has been booted from the Batman, uh, Batman Cowl, and been replaced back again with Bruce Wayne. Finally, I have been waiting for that moment. I really I liked the dynamic of Dick Grayson and Damian Wayne, but I missed having Bruce Wayne as Batman in his own title. Um, but if you didn't get enough of that, um, there is actually one more place you can look, because even though this team-up is officially done, um, this isn't the first time we've had Dick Grayson as Batman and the son of Bruce, Bruce Wayne as Robin uh, in comic book history. As a matter of fact, if you go back quite a few years, before my mom was born, um, we already had this. And I'm sure, I don't know if this is a specific inspiration Grant Morrison has already like mentioned. I hadn't heard him mention it, so I was kind of excited. Um, this is the oldest Batman comic book that I own. It's Batman issue 145. Uh, it's in terrible condition, but it's a month, it came out of the month before my mom was born, so I guess it shouldn't be in perfect condition anymore. Um, at least it shows that people enjoyed it and read it well. Um, but as you'll see, meet, uh, it says Batman 2 and Robin 2 meet the son of the Joker. It's kind of funny because the way they do this, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's a little Roman numeral 2 under the Batman logo and <laughs> under the Robin logo just to differentiate, to show that Dick Grayson and the son of Batman. Um, it's a little different uh, because obviously this is not Damian Wayne. Um, and he has not been trained by the League of Shadows. He is Bruce Wayne Jr. Uh, as Robin, and he is actually the love child of Bruce Wayne and uh, Kate, or Kathy Kane. It should have been, I think it was Kathy Kane, who is actually Batwoman, who has been replaced now with Kate Kane, who is Batwoman. Um, also, uh, if you're following the new Batwoman title, uh, you'll know that she's a lesbian, so apparently Bruce Wayne was not a very good lover because she converted to the other side. So, um, but anyway, it's a lot of fun to read. This is not their first appearance. Uh, Batman 2 and Robin 2 actually first appeared in issue 131, I believe it is. So check that out. I don't have that one, so I'm showing you the one that I have. The cool thing about mine is that we get to meet um, the son of the Joker which is always fun. It, it's fun looking at these because, you know, you, you see Dick Grayson and Damian Wayne, we've seen Batman Beyond, and, you know, we've been doing these stories forever, and so there's so many different versions of, like, the future history of these characters. It's just, it's a lot of fun. So if you happen to have this issue at home, read it. <laughs> if you want to go buy it online, honestly, it's not that expensive. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's not, it's not that bad. So anyway, that concludes the Minutia Morsel, and that is basically signals the end of our first ever Minutia Minute. I hope you tune in. Probably next week we'll have another video up. Um, don't know what we'll do yet, but it'll be something fun. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.